Hello, I'm John McNamara and I'm here today with Gary and Matt. So we're going to talk about a fantastic new development for API management and Bluemix. First off, though, shall we introduce ourselves? Hello, I'm Gary Chapman. I'm the lead technical writer for the IBM API management product. Hi, I'm Matt Roberts. I'm the architect for IBM's API management product on cloud and the integration with Bluemix that we're talking about today. Fantastic. Okay, so as a nice um, recap for anyone who's not listened to our podcast before, though I can't quite believe that's possible. Um, <laughs> should we say, should we talk briefly about, uh, as a Bluemix developer, uh, why would I care about API management? Yeah, that's a really good question, John. So uh, as you'll be aware of and folks who are familiar with Bluemix, um, one, one of the main goals of Bluemix is to give you a chance to put your applications or your, your services into this kind of public hosted environment that's managed by IBM on your behalf. So, so typically when you're doing that, you're exposing some sort of service, whether it's a REST service or a SOAP service that provides access to, to that, that application's capability. Uh, and then the, the question for you as the provider of that service is, is, is how do you externalize that to, to consumers so you can make it available to your, to your friends, your family, or your colleagues. Uh, and, and API management is a really good way of kind of controlling access to your service. Um, so you can um, define your, your application endpoint into API management and it will sit as a kind of a point of enforcement, a point of security, a point of analytics, and help you manage developer sign up and registration and, and kind of track usage uh, of the, the particular application endpoint itself. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm a Bluemix developer. Uh, how easy is it for me to get started? It's really easy, Gary, as you'd expect. Um, so so the, one of the cool things we've done with our Bluemix integration is there's now a, a new API management tile in Bluemix. Um, so if, if you log into your, your Bluemix uh, console, the, the user interface, um, pick the particular region that, that you want to work in, US South or United Kingdom, uh, and then if you go to the, the Bluemix catalog uh, and filter by the integration category, um, then you'll see uh, three or four, four tiles in there, one of which is, is the new API management service. Uh, and if you Click on that, um, and there's a, a create button, a nice friendly create button. You can press that, and within a minute or so, you'll, you'll be provisioned into the new service and kind of ready to get started. And, and how how seamless is that integration with the API Manager in, interface? If I'm in Bluemix, it, it's really good, as, as you'd expect. So so once you provision your service, the the, the service will appear as a, a tile in your in your catalog or your, your dashboard. Uh, if you click on that that tile, it will automatically launch the the API Manager user interface. Um, with the appropriate context for your, your Bluemix uh, integration, your Bluemix space, as it were. Okay. So if I want to use an API that's uh, managed by API management, um, what have I got to do in Bluemix to get to do that? Yeah. So, so in the, with a, an API defined in API management, maybe it's fronting a, a REST application running in Liberty, for example, and that hosted on Bluemix. Um, in the API management user interface, you'll have gone through and defined your API. You'll have added it to a, a plan, which lets you control rate limiting and kind of assemble different groups of resources together in, into a, something like a product. Uh, and, th and then the next stage is to, to publish that plan or that, that API back into Bluemix. Um, so what you'll see in the, in the API management user interface is a, 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 a space for uh, developer organizations. Uh, and by default, when, when we set up your, your Bluemix account in, in API management, uh, will have created a developer organization that represents your Bluemix account. Um, so you, you'll see it has the same name, it has a, a Bluemix tag against it, uh, and if you, you choose to publish um, your, your plan, uh, you can nominate that specific developer, developer organization as, as the, uh, the, the, the place where you publish it to, uh, and the, the API will then turn up in, in the, uh, the Bluemix catalog for that organization uh, as, a, as a custom API at, at the bottom of the palette. And does that tell me everything I need to be able to use the API in my Bluemix application? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we, we've we worked very hard to make sure that the, the experience from a, a Bluemix perspective is kind of native to what people expect in Bluemix. Um, so as I say, the, the API will appear as a, a tile in your Bluemix space. Um, you can provision an instance of, of that API tile, which kind of creates a, an, an instance of that service in your um, in your, your Bluemix environment. Uh, and then having bound, oh, sorry, having created that service, you can then bind that service to your, your Bluemix application. Uh, and at that point, the, the the process of binding will register that application with API management, give it its own unique identity, uh, client ID in secret, uh, that will then be passed through through to your application code that you can use to actually invoke the API at runtime. Okay. So, okay, I've got this API, I've tested it, it's working okay, but presumably that's in my Bluemix organization, but I'm going to want to share it with other organizations. How easy is that to do? Yeah, absolutely. So, so, <coughs> so very, very much the intent with, with APIs and, and the API economy in general is, is to push your, your capabilities, your services as broadly as possible. Um, so uh, what we will provide the ability to do is uh, not just publish back to your own Bluemix organization, as, as I just described, but uh, again, in, in that developers tab in the API management view, um, 
then you have the opportunity opportunity to invite another Bluemix organization or other Bluemix organizations. Uh, and you, you do that by uh, entering the email address of, of someone in the other Bluemix organization. Maybe it's a, a partner organization that you work with or a third party that you, you'd like to provide your services to. Uh, and, and when you click the add button, uh, that, that user that you're providing the email address of will re receive an activation email. Um, that links back in through Bluemix to confirm confirm their Bluemix organization. Uh, and once they complete that activation process, then another developer organization will show up representing that, that other Bluemix organization. Uh, and you can then publish your plans to, to, to that Bluemix organization as well, or you can choose which ones you want to publish in, in, in which direction. Okay, so, so one published operation from a manager will go to multiple... If, if, if you'd like it to, absolutely. Yeah. So, so in in the the kind of um, visibility or pu publish view for API management, you can choose which specific developer organisations you want to publish to, uh, or if you just want to publish it to all of your developer organisations that that are in Bluemix, then there's a, a special Bluemix tag that you can specify that will make it go to every, all of your registered Bluemix orgs. Okay. So, if, if I got some um, API, but uh, um, I want API management to be sitting there as a, a front end to my APIs, but What's to stop a developer calling them directly and bypassing API Manager altogether? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. So I mean, your endpoints in Bluemix are, to a large extent, public, um, so they're generally accessible on the internet. And the API Management accesses them via the internet. Uh, and and the, the point you're making, Gary, is what, what prevents people from hitting that, that kind of raw service directly. Um, so there's a certain amount of kind of security through obscurity. As with all things, you'd have to guess the host name and port in, in the Bluemix case. But we don't obviously want want to rely on on that type of model because people could find out through through one, one way or another. Um, so there are various approaches for for securing that interaction between the API management platform and and, and the target service, your your Bluemix application. Uh, so in in a simple case, you might just choose to um, put a, a basic auth challenge on on the application endpoint in Bluemix, so a particular username and password, uh, kind of representing a, a system as it were. Uh, and then you can burn that username and password into the API management API definition. So when it, it makes the call to, to the target service, it will provide that to establish that trust. Uh, and that, that, that's pretty good. It, it kind of does the job. Um, but uh, for, for extra security, uh, you can also um, set up uh, SSL mutual auth between the API management platform and, and the, uh, the target service endpoint. So in the Bluemix application, you'd specify a a particular client certificate that you were willing to accept requests from uh, and you'd place that, that client certificate into the API management configuration uh, and vice versa for, for, for what the API management server is talking to. Okay, so also from a security point of view, if I've got um, application endpoints and they're running inside my on-premises data centre, um, how can I access those to make those available as APIs in Bluemix? Yeah, uh, and, and this type of scenario is where, where the power of Bluemix comes in, as it were. Um, so API management is, is far from the only service in Bluemix. Um, one of the other really great ones that, that fits well in, in the API management space is, is called the, uh, the the secure gateway. Um, so uh, again, if you're in the Bluemix console, if you go into the catalog, select the uh, integration category, um, then kind of alongside the API management tile, you'll see this, this, this secure gateway. Uh, and this, this gives you a, a, a way to tunnel into your on-premises environment. So without having to expose uh, ports on, on your DMZ, your, your public-facing network. Um, you can download a little agent, which generally takes the form of a, um, a Docker container, and you run that Docker container in, inside your enterprise or on your laptop or your desktop machine. Um, it will reach out to, to the Bluemix cloud and, and establish this, this secure tunnel. Um, and then in, in the Bluemix interface, um, you define which specific endpoints in your on-premise world you want to make available. So, so it's not like a, a kind of one-size-fits-all SSH-style tunnel that lets you get access to everything. You have to explicitly grant permissions to particular endpoints um, so, so that you've secured, secured that tunnel appropriately. Uh, and then once you've defined that, the, the secure gateway service in Bluemix will expose you an endpoint in Bluemix, just like any other application endpoint in Bluemix. Uh, and you can then tie the API management um, service, the API management API implementation to, to that, that endpoint that's exposed by the secure gateway. Awesome. So that sounds really exciting and incredibly useful. But I'm assuming that it's not all free to use in Bluemix. So uh, how, does it, how do you get charged and how much does it cost? Mm -hmm. Yep. So as you'd expect with the power and, and flexibility that that we're providing, we don't want to give it all away for free. Um, but what we do want to do is, is make it available to, to developers to try out and kind of kick the tires in, in a kind of really easily consumable fashion. Um, so, so as with many of the Bluemix services, there's a, a free tier that you can can make use of each month. Uh, and in our case, um, the kind of primary measure is, is the, num the number of API calls that you make. 
Um, so there's a, a free tier of uh, 5,000 API calls that you can invoke per month, which is more than enough to kind of kick the tires, do some basic testing and, and understand uh, how you'd use the product, um, but probably not enough to run your kind of high throughput production workload. Um, so if, if you go over that, that 5,000 API calls in a month, then uh, you'll be charged a certain amount in, in increments of uh, 100,000 API calls, I think it is. So that, 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 that's kind of the primary measure. Um, there are a couple of other other uh, things that you, you might get billed for as well. Um, so if you make use of the the developer portal outside of Bluemix, so if you're exposing your APIs to non-Bluemix developers, then there's an incremental cost per application developer there. Uh, and there's also an optional feature in API management for, for logging the payload of, of the request and response for your API calls. Uh, if you want to do kind of retrospective um, business analytics on, on, on the payload of the API calls that are coming in and out. So if you use more than 50 megabytes of data for that, then uh, then it will, will, uh, will charge you a kind of uh, incremental charge based on how much you actually use there. If, if I'm using other Bluemix services, it will incorporate into a single bill. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so so uh, Blue, Bluemix is designed to, to be this kind of one-stop one shop for all of your, your service requirements, and, and the billing aspect of that is very important. So the, 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 the capabilities you use from API management or the volume of API calls you use from API management will be rolled up into your, your single centralised Bluemix bill f for your organisation. Mm -hmm. Now, IBM is continually adding new features to the um, API management product. Um, so as a Bluemix user, what am I going to do to upgrade to those latest versions? <coughs> So the the great news about uh, a hosted managed offering like, like Bluemix and like API management's uh, public cloud as well, similarly, uh, is that, that IBM is responsible for doing all that kind of nitty-gritty upgrade and management activity for you. Um, so when we release a, a new version, as, as we did uh, a, a week or so ago, um, that, that's automatically rolled out to the entire of the Bluemix estate um, at, at the same time. So our operations team work very hard to kind of make sure that that's a seamless process with uh, zero or minimal minimal downtime uh, and the next time you log in uh, you'll find the, these new features available but your existing APIs will, will still be kind of merrily um, carrying on and that they'll, they'll kind of seamlessly migrate from, from the one version to the next. And do you announce information about the updates? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we have a, a Twitter feed uh, for, for our IBM API management ops team uh, which is, is where we do the announcements when uh, either there's an upgrade happening or in the rare occasions we're experiencing problems with the, the service, then we kind of post that there as well so that people can, can see what the current status is. Um, there's also a, a, a status view in, in Bluemix as well for all the services that will, will give you updates as well. Cool. So to summarise, who do we see the API management service in Bluemix being useful for? So I think that there's two two categories, John. There's there's kind of existing Bluemix users, so people who are kind of well into Bluemix, you've got lots of applications running, you're kind of re really sold on, on the story and, and, and the value there. Um, for those folks, um, the API management service gives you a great way of controlling access to your existing endpoints, as I, as I kind of described at the beginning. So uh, you, you have, have your application endpoint, you want to meter access to it, you want to restrict who can call those application endpoints, you want to understand how much they're calling it, all, all those types of things. So that, that's a really good scenario for them. Uh, and then uh, even for folks that aren't yet into the Bluemix space, um, the, the, the integration that we have provides a really good kind of path forward. So if if you're a provider of APIs, uh, location services or shipping services or something, um, one of your goals m most likely in, in the a API economy space is to broaden the reach of those services. Uh, and the integration with Bluemix means that you can push those APIs out so that they can be consumed by um, any number of Bluemix organisations that you, you want to, to invite to use them. Fantastic. So, um, I'm hugely interested. Where would I go? Is there a community or a blog or a Twitter feed that I can go to for more information? Yep. Um, so there's a, a number of places. Um, kind of e easiest way to get started information-wise, if you go into the Bluemix user interface, there's a, a docs link in, in the uh, the nav bar at the top. Uh, if you follow down there in the integration category, there's a whole section on API management there. So it, there's a great getting started guide that was written by some of the, some of the folks that work with us on, on the integration. Um, there are tutorials, videos, blogs in there, links off to our knowledge centre, which is kind of the, the authoritative source for step-by-step for -step guidance on, on everything API management. Sweet. I'll put links into the video in that case. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so very much for joining us. It's been an absolute joy as always. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks, John.